All right, uh, this is a fairly impromptu. Here we go. Uh, run of four seasons on hard mode, one of the newest dungeons on the hardest available difficulty uh, in pet update part two. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, the new update, uh, it has a. This dungeon is about as hard as a tech twin mission. From my experience, this is the first time I've done it on hard. I have done it several times on the lower difficulty, which is intermediate by default. Um, each room is basically like a gimmick or a puzzle of some sort. Oops, I'm on auto combat for some reason. Uh, in the first room, we have to uh, stop the enemies that spawn from getting into this little circle in the corner, as I'm indicating with my mouse. Um, Throughout the dungeon, some mobs are red and some are blue. Red ones can only be damaged by players. Blue ones can only be damaged by pets. Uh, the blue ones do uh, have a uh, weird status where they receive increased damage from pets. So it's not that bad if your pets are super weak. Uh, but it's pretty bad, apparently, uh, in hard mode. In intermediate, it's... Not, not a problem at all. Even the weakest pets can still fight with the damage boost. But in hard mode it seems to be taking a bit. Uh, we have to wait for this progress to hit uh, 6 out of 6 to move on. And until then it's just a matter of continuously fighting. Now, I am going to turn names off so that it's easier to see. Um, and with me are the gracious guinea pigs that have... That have subjected themselves to the experimental torment of this run. Uh, I don't think any of us have run this on hard before, and some of the party mates noted this is their first time doing the Four Seasons version of this dungeon at all. Notably, there is a different version of this dungeon called Dynamic Lands, which is completely different through a separate portal directly adjacent to the one that we took. No? And now this room is done. And introducing my guinea pigs, we have... Uh, Mage Stone 7, Latiz Gia, Yoshari, Haini, myself, Tsukiski, Marshmallow, plus Tarlock. And then nobody in the 8th position, because, I don't know, reasons. For the second room, we need to fill up both of these bars up to 100%. The red bar is filled by getting kills uh, as a player. And the blue bar is filled by getting kills with a pet. Oftentimes what ends up happening in these runs is we have to wait for our pets to finish off these mobs. And then whenever it is that it's time for us to add player kills, somebody just nukes the spawn <laughs> and immediately moves it. So m much of the dungeon for the four seasons is going to revolve around do you have pets that are strong enough to make it timely because there is a lot of waiting around for your pets to kill things in this dungeon thus far it seems like sentiment is that if you're running fast spammy uh, runs through the magmail dungeon in order to receive fin beads, the way to go is with the other version of this dungeon, the dynamic lands, specifically because there's not as much waiting around for your pets to kill things. Neither run is particularly hard. Frankly, I don't know why we're doing this on hard. I, just an experiment. I guess. I'm trying to see how hard it is. As you can see, it's taking a little bit for our pets collectively to finish off this guy in the corner here. This one is, as you might be able to tell, uh, not blue, which means they don't have the damage uh, increase that they receive from pets. So let's zoom in here. You can see this is a blue guy. Oh, there, that cramps is kind of in the way. But underneath them, you can see there's a red guy down there. And the other ones are wearing white. Notably, if you happen to summon a pet that you can mount, and you mount them to attack, that counts as a pet kill. Um, but it will use your damage. 
So that is one way to make things faster. Additionally, the one of the gimmicks for both versions of Magmel is that the pet that you summon, which you have to summon before entering the mission, is the pet that you get in this dungeon. You cannot desummon your pet while inside of Magmel. Uh, you do still use up the pet summon time, though, which means if you take too long in Magmel, your pet may run out of summon time. Not to worry, though, if your pet runs out of summon time while inside the dungeon, it will still stay summoned. It will just immediately desummon when you leave the dungeon. I had an unfortunate circumstance where I was stuck in a boss room for too long and that happened to me. I was very worried I'd get stuck without a pet, because pets are pretty important in these dungeons for the various puzzles. They make sure that you cannot get stuck without a pet. In fact, they make extra sure, because in the off chance you enter this dungeon without any phoenix feathers, they give you special phoenix feathers, literally called special phoenix feathers, uh, when you enter the dungeon, presumably so that you always have a way to revive your pet. If you're planning to run uh, the intermediate version of this dungeon, it probably doesn't matter. But for the hard version of this dungeon, I strongly recommend having the pet that you choose be a finny pet, so that your pet doesn't knock them down. Otherwise this takes way longer. As I mentioned, this is the first time I'm experiencing this dungeon. I have already run the other version, the Dynamic Lands, on hard mode. Uh, and my experience with the hard mode version of Dynamic Lands was that it was approximately equal to a tech to win dungeon on advanced, possibly elite difficulty. That's my subjective viewpoint. Um, thus far, I have not seen a similar amount of difficulty from this version of Magmel's hard mode, but the difficulty does notably spike in the later rooms which we will get to when we get to them. Also important to note that this is a completely random party that I stumbled across in the middle of the night, so a coordinated party may do much better in this dungeon than we are. No offense to my wonderful guinea pigs, of course. Now, for those interested in running this dungeon, it does require a pass, but you can purchase it from the deer named Finette in... Uh, Magmel. It's 500k for a pass. Or you can get the pass randomly as a reward from the intermediate version of Magmel. Possibly other locations, but that's where I got mine. If you, for whatever reason, fail to keep these two bars close enough, I, I'm thinking like 15 to 20% based on my experience is around the maximum you can afford to get them apart. If, you, if they get too far apart, uh, you get cursed. And the, this curse motif uh, comes up a lot in the Four Seasons version of Magmel. There's various effects that can take place, uh, ranging from movement speed reduction to just taking damage, to the most annoying one, which is that your controls invert, which is even more annoying for me because I don't use WASD to move, I use my mouse. And when your controls invert, it is not actually possible to escape from a wall. Uh, because if you click on an out of bounds location while your controls are inverted, you don't move away from out of bounds, you just stutter against the wall. Oh, goodness gracious. I was not expecting that. Um, so this is the Prey Room, and I will turn my names back on for this. Um, oh, someone killed an animal. We may actually fail this. 
Rain? Now, Lullaby and Rain both work inside Magmel, which is one notable distinction from Tectwin. So for this room, the goal is to stop the Predator mobs from making it to the end. Oh, I, I hit the moose there. Uh, in the normal version of this dungeon, they move fairly slowly. In the hard mode version of this dungeon, they charge, apparently, very quickly. You do not at all get a lot of time to distinguish whom you should and should not be attacking. Um, essentially, there's a variety of different mobs that spawn, and the goal is to weed out all of the predators from the prey, so that the prey make it across, but not any of the predators. I'm not sure what happens if the red bar fills, which is letting through too many prey. I've never experienced it before because it's normally not this hard. Um, these mobs move extremely quickly compared to the intermediate version. Uh, when the blue bar fills, you just win the room. Um, if you accidentally kill a friendly mob, everybody pauses and cannot move. Sometimes you only get a movement speed slow, but in either case you can no longer attack. Your pets can still attack, however. It's strongly advised to have your pets not be on auto combat for this section so they don't auto target uh, passive mobs, but also to be ready to manually control your pet towards targeting specific enemies in case somebody makes a mistake. Because you're always going to have that special someone who thinks that they're the special exception that can afford to use Fireball in this room. True story, by the way. Also, if if anyone uses Fireball while we're while they're running with me in this room, I will call you out and I will be upset. It's a good thing rain happens to work in this room, although it seems to be also affecting the passive mobs. Now that we've gotten used to the speed though, things got much better. And now the room that gave me the most trouble when I was soloing this... The timer room. After the first orb is hit, all of these orbs light up and they start counting down. You have to defeat every mob in the room before the countdown hits zero. Otherwise you have to start over. And you can get trapped in here for quite a long time. The main difficulty is that some of these mobs can only be hurt by pets. So we failed. Priority needs to be on killing the ones that are immune. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask Linhee to st stop using Chain Sweep. The severe limiting factor in this room is how quickly can you kill the ones that only take damage from your pets. Cool, we made it. And props to Linhe for not using Chain Sleep. Not, not, mistakes happen. People aren't sure what they're supposed to do, sometimes misclicks. The real value that I find in a party mate is someone who's willing to read the chat for one thing, <laughs> but more importantly to, to listen. So uh, thank you Lahini, who I just realized I've been mispronouncing your name, Lahini, not Linhi, um, for being willing to accommodate me on that. Now, Marshmallow is uh, correcting me that Fireball also makes them immune to pets, but my Fireball also kills everything. My problem... 
Uh, it's more of the, the spamming the chain sweep when it's no longer needed. <laughs> it looks like I'm being delegated the role of flower bulbs. Some of our party mates have not run this before, so we're giving them a lowdown in chat of what the mechanics are. But for the viewers at home, the, whoever you are, um, this boss has a few special mechanics. The first and most deadly of them is that she has the ability to instantly kill you. Yep, that's a thing. Uh, then she also has this spiral spin attack where she sends out a lot of petals. And after she does this linear dash that you just saw sh her do, she now has this red umbrella thing. While that's active, attacking her uh, reflects damage. So don't attack her while that's active. And also be wary of the petals. There are petal items that you are given throughout this dungeon that are rendering you immune to the pedal attack that she does there. Also, unlike the other boss, who continuously respawns the mobs that he summons, Floor does not continuously resummon them. She does resummon them on occasion, under specific triggers. But on, except for those triggers, which she always summons more anyway, you're free to kill the adds. Floor also has a special title if you use Dance of Death on her. It looks like the party has gotten accustomed to not attacking Floor while she has the shield up. Good. Oh yeah, Floor can uh... Oh, I guess I just killed myself with the damage reflection. I thought it had gone down already. Whoopsie! So yeah, Floor can also chain cast uh, all the advanced magic. I believe she only uses a specific one based on what form she's in. She changes forms every 25% of her health. Alright, I gotta really pay attention to that shield so I don't shoot it and kill myself. 3,000 damage into my mana shield. It's pretty yikes. Ah, I wasted my uh, my vital surge. I didn't re pay attention to the fact that backroom boost had just come up. See a lot of people killing themselves on Floor's shield. It's unfortunate. She is about to start her first mini game at the 75th percentile. Ah, that fireball smoke really conceals her uh, her abilities well. There we go. There's the mini game, and it's done. I got lucky on that one. Well, a little bit of frame lag there. Hopefully that doesn't show in the video, but it probably will. Um, so I didn't really get a chance to explain the mini game <laughs> because I just immediately lucked out on it. Um, but essentially, she spawns a 5x5 field of, of flower bulbs, and you're given a certain number of flower bulbs that you're allowed to guess at where she is by hitting them. Uh, if you get it right, you pass. And if you get it wrong, she heals a certain amount. I'm not sure what the healing scales with. I've heard many theories, i.e. it scales with how many you get wrong. But of course, the amount you get wrong is always the amount, depending on how many people you have in your party. So I don't know if that's true. Uh, how many you're allowed to get wrong before uh, you fail depends on your party size. Larger parties, for some reason, you're you have fewer attempts. Uh, in solo mode, you actually get enough attempts, and hints come often enough, 
that you can reliably find Fleur uh, in large parties however you essentially have to rely on guesswork there is a way to guess more intelligently and therefore make the best out of the bad situation that is fighting this boss but uh, it is eventually going to come down to guesswork I'll explain more about the appropriate algorithm to use uh, when it is time which should be coming up when she hits 50% notably if you fail the minigame and she heals she'll whoops that's my bad she'll likely heal above the percentage threshold meaning that you'll just hit it again and have to do the minigame again it is however possible to crit her so far down into the next lower th oh, I did it again. Wow, I'm an idiot, I guess, today. Uh-oh. I actually don't know what this is. I've never seen it before. It looks like Yoshari has just been sucked into the land of... Uh, you're dead now. Uh, I believe our what we need to do is hit floor a certain number of times. And for that, dual guns, although I can't shoot her. Ah! Yikes! She just healed a bunch. Uh, she healed, in fact, almost all of her health. I don't know what Yoshari was subjected to, but... It looks like somebody protected us with the petals that I mentioned earlier. Oh! This is gonna be an interesting fight. Ah! Wait, her... Damage reduction is back already? I hadn't noticed. I really need to pay more attention to that. And that cone of dust that she just blew out? That's the instant kill. Where everyone just falls over like that? That's her instant kill attack. She just, uh, she just instantly kills. Ooh, the triple fireball. Annoying to be sure. Uh, uh oh. Okay, now I gotta stop hitting her. Not get distracted by my attempts to provide useful commentary. There's the cone of, of death. Scooter, there I go. Oh, that's coming right for me. It is unfortunate that I chose my scooter for this uh, mission, since it's one of the few high-level pets that I have that I can't actually use to... Uh... Gosh, I don't know how I survived that. But I'm glad I did. As, anyways, it's one of the few high level pets that I have that I can't actually use archery while mounted on. I notice Floor is not very wounded, unfortunately. Her health is quite low. And now so is mine. Uh, but she's not very wounded. When Floor does the petal spawn attack, some of the petals are different colors. They inflict... Whoa, frame lag. They inflict a special debuff depending on what color they are. I don't know what color corresponds to what debuff, though I sh could probably figure it out. Ah, she's really chasing after me now. Or I guess after my scooter, more accurately. Lenny's uh, natural shield is really doing a number here. I may ask Lenny to stop 
Uh, it looks like we don't have to redo... Oh, those frame lags are uh, really kind of worrying me. Now that they're happening as often as they are. Oh, got death coned again. Yeah, the instant death is definitely uh, off-putting. There is a fairly pronounced telegraph. If I weren't doing this in the middle of the night, I could probably reactively anchor rush it. Anchor rush is an amazing ability. It's a little strong. But that's what makes it so amazing. So yes, I am very glad that we don't have to redo the... Uh, little flower bulb mini game, it seems, since she didn't do it again at the 75th percentile. Most likely because she has already transitioned into phase 2, so it doesn't matter that her health went up. Phase 2 being what happens after you finish one of the flower games. Oops, I did the dumb. So one of the most annoying debuffs is this silence debuff that she just inflicted on me that prevents me from using skills or firing a skill I've already loaded. Now for the, the, the minigame. So there's a 5x5 five five field of flowers. You need to run around and hit them. It's very annoying. Uh, every time you hit one, it slows you down. Which is, of course, the most annoying part of it. Looks like my party has decided to just let me take full control over it. Should probably sit my pet down. Somewhere, somewhere far. Yeah, border. All right. Oh, I found her right at the end. How I've gotten very lucky so far with these. So now she's in phase three, her uh, autumn form, I believe, where she spams thunder. Don't know what it is that she did to uh, Yoshari earlier, but I really hope she doesn't do it again. back off now that I don't need them. Other than being careful of this damage reflection, uh, Floor isn't a particularly hard boss. Well, that and the, the instant death, as if just to prove me wrong. <laughs> Ah, we have managed to burst her down far enough to get back into the bulb minigame again. Uh, one thing you can do to avoid the little slow is to just mount a pet, something I had forgotten, but which a party mate kindly reminded me of. After you've hit five on the border, you want to hit the center one for the hint. It says somewhere far, which means you go back to the border. I skipped that one for literally no reason, uh, and got lucky. So I've gotten lucky and found her on every single time that we've done this mini game. However, it is entirely possible that you do not find her, uh, in which case she heals and you have to do the mini game again at some point, uh, and then you just end up getting Cone of Death all over again. It really is a very frustrating circumstance to find yourself in. And now that we've finished that minigame three times, she's transitioned into phase four, which is the final form, and it looks like she has decided, nope, she doesn't love us enough, and she's 
done this again, which I do not know what it is. But I can only assume it will not be good for us and will muchly involve her healing back to what looks like maybe 70 to 80 percent. I know that it. Um, with that purple bar, it makes it seem like we have to hit her a certain number of times. I believe it's. 30 times per person, um, which in the time that you're given is basically like, ah, uh, this is the one that I hate the most, the upside down screen. Out of all the debuffs, that one is most disorienting for me, which is why I hate it. And now I have a cat that I can't kill stuck on me, because it is blue, which means only my pet can hurt it. Looks like she didn't heal quite all the way up to full though, which is nice. I was expecting much more. That instant kill, wow. Just let us end you already. Getting a crit certainly helps. I am targeting one of the cats. I can't hurt a cat. They're so cute, even though they definitely kill me a lot. Oh god. Oh, the upside down camera. Oh, there we go. I'm sure there are probably people out there who don't find the upside down camera to be particularly disorienting. Um, but whoever they are, they aren't me. <laughs> Someone just final hit it directly into that, uh, looks like it was Lahini. Poor thing. The damage reduction can be very hard to see. Um, the petals kind of blend in with the floor sometimes. Uh, like I said, it can be hard to see, even though I was staring right at it. It does seem to last longer uh, in hard mode. I'm firing at the cadence that I've gotten used to from doing this dungeon in the intermediate mode. And it definitely seems like the shield lasts longer in hard mode. It also activates sooner because in intermediate mode you can fire at her while she's doing the dash and be fine. But in hard mode she seems to get the shield as soon as she starts the dash, or very soon after it. She is nearly dead though. There we go. Luckily, once she dies, every pet that was dead magically comes back to life. And then you end up getting... Eh, some stuff, I guess. From the rewards. Which is wonderful. We did it! Yay! Uh, once you finish the dungeon, your chest will spawn at your feet. You can snipe someone else's chest, but then they just snipe yours in return, so there's no real point to it. And you can either leave by clicking the exit in the upper right corner, or through the portal that spawns at the center. Be careful though, if you're standing in the center of the map when she dies, your chest can spawn underneath the portal, which can make it a little tricky to click on. Just something to be careful about. But anyway, thanks for watching, and if you plan to do this mission yourself, good luck.